All right, guys, we're back here for part three, working with the same piece of clay. I'm just doing this in small chunks. So we went over how to get the clay attached to the bat. We went over how to start to get it centered into the wheel head. So the next thing we want to do is make our little well to start to open this up. So I've got my wheel in already. I'm kicking it to get it started, stepping on the pedal to get it moving. So at this point, I tend to have my foot fully on the pedal because I need that force when I'm centering the clay. And then now I need a little more force when I open it. After I get it open, then we'll back off on the pedal and back off on the gas, so to speak. So once we get it centered, again, our hands are wet. Clay has a nice slip to it. In other words, it's sliding. What I like to do is keep that left hand steady there. And then I put my hand kind of connect the two. I use this portion of my hand here. There's kind of a little natural curve or bump here. I try to put that over the top and I just flatten off the top. I don't want it to be like a volcano where there's an indent on the inside so much. I just hold it there steady just to flatten off the top and keep it down to, I've heard people say like, a little mound or a tuna can shape, something similar to that. So then again, I keep my hands wet, I keep the clay wet. I'm just going to use that little natural curve on the back of my hand. It's kind of right in here where your hand curves to put that in the center so it's turning nice and true and it will make a slight little depression or a little well there. That helps me get my fingers here so I know where to open it up in the center. So now there's a couple different ways you can open it. I've seen people put their two thumbs here and press down together. I've seen people use their fingertips and press in. I've seen people line up their fingers and kind of put their thumb here against the two fingers, kind of like a hot dog in a bun. Um, there's a putter by the name of Tim C. And that's the way he teaches it. Um, I'm gonna say again, there's no right or wrong. It's what you find is most comfortable for you that will keep your fingers in the center, that will open the clay up in the center and not alter or change its shape. So put a little water there. Keep that left hand riding here as we always have. I'm gonna go ahead and take my fingers here. I'm gonna connect the two, that's the most important part. I'm gonna slide my fingers in till they get to the center where they just kind of rest there and move and I'm gonna to start to press down and make a little depression, okay? It's gonna make the clay dry, so I'm gonna stop and get some water there. Again, I'm gonna do the same thing, and I'm just gonna press down till I feel like I have about a half inch of clay down at the bottom. And when I press down, unless I angle my hand, this is gonna flare out a little bit. We'll fix that and straighten it up in a few minutes, okay? So I'm just gonna go slightly down a little bit more. Now you may be thinking, well, how do you know how far to go down? And that's kind of the thing that you learn over time. But as a beginner, this is where you stop the wheel. Remember, you drag your foot to stop it. We take our needle tool. <clears throat> we go ahead and slide the needle tool down the bottom in the center. Take your finger and slide it down till it hits the clay. And go ahead and pull that up. I hope the video shows this, but the tip to your fingertip is showing you how thick the bottom of your clay is. And as a beginner, I would try and aim for having about a half inch of clay down there. If you end up going a little too shallow, you can't add clay back. And when you go to cut your project off the wheel head, off the bat, you may cut through your project and lose your project. If you leave it too thick, it's going to mean that you've wasted a lot of clay that you could have thrown but at least you can trim some of that away and you'll still have your project. So our goal, about a half inch um, of clay down there. That'll let us make a really nice foot. As you get better, your goal might be to aim for more like a quarter to three eighths of an inch. Okay, so I think we're about where we want it to be. So now what we wanna do is we wanna widen this little well. Um, and so you can do this again a couple of ways. You can take your fingers and you can just drag them straight back towards you. Okay, that's one way. Again, make sure your clay is nice and soft, I'm sorry, nice and moist and slippery so that 
um, your clay will, your fingers will slide and not dig in. Another way, you can turn these two fingers from the way we had it when we were opening, this way. You can put them in the center, and then you can push out sideways. So that's another way. I've also seen people that take their thumbs and push forward. So a lot of different ways you can open it. Um, it's up to you what you uh, find is the most comfortable and gives you the most success time and time again. Okay? So once we go ahead and we get it open, and I should say we want to open it about as wide as what we want our project to be. So I've got a small piece of clay here and I'm just going to throw a simple cylinder. So I only need it to be so wide. Now I wouldn't pull it out wider than what your base is because you need what um, you need the support of what's underneath it as you pull it up initially. If you open it wider than what your base is, then there's nothing underneath there to support it. When we think of it as stacking little Legos, we want something underneath it that's going to make it strong and give it stability. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten this bottom a little bit because as you drag your fingers across, it's not always nice and flat. So you can do this um, real simply by taking your thumb, start in the center, and then just pushing out to the side. You can either push out to the side or you can push it forward. But basically, we want to feel like the pad of this thumb is flat, and we're just going ahead and sliding it across and flattening it out so we get a nice flat bottom. And you might go over that a couple times just to make sure it's nice and smooth. And you can take your sponge if you like, and you can just sponge up some of the water out of the inside so that you can take a look at your bottom so you can make sure that it's nice and flat and smooth. We don't want it to be uneven with lots of little ridges and so forth in it um, as we learn. Now later you might decide that you want to put a little swirl in the bottom and make it look fancy. It sometimes holds the glaze nice and you can go back and you can do that. But initially I would say put that nice flat bottom in as you're learning and that'll give you a nice surface there whether it's a cup, a bowl, a plate, whatever. It just makes it nice and um, smooth. So now at this point, as I told you, we have this little bit of overhang. We're going to straighten that up. So the way we want to do that is get our hands wet, make sure the outside of the clay has um, got moist, I uh, should say liquid, water, slip on it so it's slippery. And just take our hands, cup them together, and go ahead and stand that clay up. Okay? That's going to add a little bit of height to our project straight away. So now what we want to do is we want to start pulling the clay up. And it's similar to a pinch pot that we did earlier in the school year, but now the wheel head is turning our clay rather than our hand turning our clay. So what we're doing is we're pinching this clay, and as we pinch it, it's going to force it to go up so that we create the walls of our pot. So this is where it goes a little bit different. Instead of being on the left so much, now we're going to move to the right. Why? because now the clay will be spinning away from our fingertips. If we were to do this on this side, it's spinning into our fingertips. If it hits our fingers wrong, it's easy to throw it off center. So if we're on this side and it's spinning away from our fingers, less chance of us bumping it and messing it up. So we're gonna put our fingers inside. You can put one, two, three, whatever works best for you. Sometimes it depends on the size of the um, clay you're working with and just let it ride there. You have to kind of almost kind of put your wrist and your elbow at your side. Sometimes I'll even slide over on the bench seat on the wheel a little bit on this side so I can get over there easier. Then on this side, we're gonna take our finger and it's gonna ride on the outside here. Now you can use your fingertips, you can use one finger. A lot of potters will use their knuckle, okay? And if you're gonna use your knuckle, then take the thumb here, put it in the crook of this finger, and just wrap it over it, okay? The main thing, again, is we want to keep our hands connected. So we're going to go ahead and let that slide there. We're going to put our th um, thumb in the finger, and we're going to go ahead and line it up against it. Just get the feel of this initially, okay? You don't have to squeeze at this point, but let it ride there and see what it feels like. Make sure you've got plenty of slip or water on your clay so it's sliding. If it starts to get dry, go ahead and put a little water on it. Okay? 
So again, we're going to move slow, but we want to keep everything locked in, elbows in to our sides. We want to be nice and steady. So you can make a little um, channel, so to speak, with your finger on the outside. It's okay if it takes a little bit of the clay away. And then you can put that knuckle underneath there. Okay, you're using this flat part, not the knuckle tip here, but the flat part of your finger. So we're going to put that together. And now what we're going to do is squeeze slightly and I'm going to pull up and in and I'm just dragging the clay from the bottom up to the top. And when I get to the top, I take my hands off very slowly. If I take them off fast and I bump it wrong, it'll knock it off center. So the top, I want to level off. I'm going to take my finger and my thumb and let them ride here on the inside. The clay's getting a little dry, so I'm going to add a little water to it. I'm going to let them ride there. I'm going to take this other finger and I'm going to build like a little bridge. And I'm just going to flatten that down and smooth it off so that I keep a nice rim at the top of my project. I'm going to put a little more water on it. I'm going to make another little channel down here at the bottom. Add a little more water just to make sure it stays slippery. I'm going to go back down inside, very bottom. I'm going to connect my hands the same way. I'm going to squeeze the clay just a little bit. And don't go crazy. If you squeeze it too hard, then you're going to go ahead and tear the clay or torque it. Okay. So I've got quite a bit of water down inside, so I'm going to mop some of the water out. Just take your sponge, hold it steady, and mop some of the water out. Go ahead and squeeze that and remove it. So um, our goal at this point is to throw the clay so it's about the thickness of a pencil, about a quarter of an inch. Now, you'll probably leave it a little thicker at the bottom, and that's okay because we need support at the bottom. If it's too thin and wobbly at the bottom, all this stuff at the top will want to collapse. So I can probably make one or two more pulls. I'm going to go ahead and put a little more water on, make sure the outside is slippery. I'm going to go ahead and make one more little channel at the bottom. It just helps me grab the clay so that I can pull it up. I'm going to go back down inside, and now I may not be able to connect my thumb down in here unless I have, you have, very long fingers and thumbs. Um, so I basically try to keep the two pieces, two hands touching each other at all times. So they're working together. If I raise my right hand, my left hand's going to come with it. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and squeeze a little bit more. I have to use my fingertips more now instead of my knuckle. And I'm going to go ahead and just squeeze a little bit more of that clay and even it out. I may not be making it much taller, but I'm getting it so that the clay is more evenly distributed top to bottom. Now, if you feel like the clay sometimes grabs on your fingers or it's tearing the clay off, then what you can do at this point is take your sponge, squeeze most of the water out of it. Go ahead and make sure the outside has plenty of water. Then put your hand inside. Again, you're connecting and resting the sponge on this thumb. And you're going to go ahead and use your fingers and the sponge is going to kind of cushion in between and it will keep it from grabbing the clay if your clay is really soft and tearing your clay. And all we're trying to do at this point is make cylinders. The reason I like you to just make cylinders, whether they're tall and narrow or short and wide, is because it teaches you to throw the clay evenly. Don't worry about shaping it. Don't worry about trying to make it into a bowl, into a vase, into um, anything at all. Just throw cylinders. The better you get at throwing cylinders, then you can learn to shape them and adjust them into whatever you're trying to make. But the cylinders, throwing them top to bottom, is going to teach you to pull the clay nice and evenly. Okay? I'm going to mop some of the water out of the inside. And you might have to do that a couple times depending on how moist it is, how much water is down there. And we're just going to drag it on the inside from the bottom up to the top. So this is all we're going to do here. I've pulled the clay nicely. I think I have it fairly even. Now there's just a couple things that we'll do to straighten it up. So this is where I like the wood tool, the wood knife. 
there's a little skirt of clay down here at the bottom that I'd like to remove. If I remove it now, it's less work that I have to do later when I'm trimming. So I take the tip of it, you could even use a pencil tip if that's all you have. And you're gonna go ahead and just start in here and slide it down, hold it steady with both hands, and then just straight down and hold it in place until you hit the back. Then you can go ahead and stop your wheel. You can take the tip of it and cut in at an angle. And then you can go ahead and just use your foot to turn slowly against that tool. Okay, make sure you don't push it into your project, just hold it steady. And it'll remove that little bit of clay, that little skirt. It's less clay that you'll have to trim off later. So then you can go back and hold the tool on its side. I usually do this more from behind, but hopefully the camera picks it up. And I just hold it there so that it cleans up anything and keeps it nice and true. So that's the first part. The second part in making it a little bit neater, you can use your wooden rib or you can use the card. So I'm going to go ahead and put just a little bit more water in here. I know I mopped it out, but I'm going to go back and do this now. I take the edge of the card and what I like to do is just hold it against the outside and then it just trues up the form and it'll remove any excess slip. It'll take away any throwing rings out of the clay and it'll give it a really nice smooth finished surface. Okay, you can see it takes some of the slip away. So we just clean that off, put it in our bucket and we just look at it, see if there's any more that we need to clean off. It's okay if it scrapes on the back and just slowly move it along the side from the bottom to the top, okay? Then we're going to go ahead and mop out the rest of that water that I just put back in there. Drag the sponge from the bottom up to the top nice and slow. No hurried movements, nothing jerky. We want to keep it centered nice and true. When we get to the top, we're pretty much done. Now, on the very top, you have a couple options. You can take your sponge and just spin the sponge over the top to round it off. Or if you do have a chamois, you can take your chamois and you're just going to lightly drape it over the outside and round off that rim. It just gives it a really nice, soft touch to it. That way, if you're going to use this as a tumbler to drink out of, whatever it might be in the future, as you get better at making things, it just gives it a nice finished look. Okay, just gonna clean a little bit of that water off the rim there. And there we go, we're all finished with it. So at this point, we go ahead and we drag our foot and stop. We go ahead and turn off the motor. And so at this point, um, you can leave your project on the back, but we wanna cut the bottom. Um, so that as the clay dries and shrinks, it doesn't grab against the surface here. If it grabs as it dries and shrinks, it'll cause you to get cracks. They call them S cracks in the bottom of your project. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and take our wire tool and we're gonna go ahead and hold it nice and tight and we're just gonna slide it right underneath there. Now, if you left the proper amount of clay at the bottom, you have no problem. If you didn't and you went too thin, then you will cut through a project. And trust me, that's part of the learning curve. I cut through many a project. So at this point, you can use the back side of your wooden knife, go to where the bat pin is, just wiggle it under there, and go ahead and lift that bat up. Okay? And then you would go ahead and take this and store it in the cabinet and give it a day or two to get leather hard. You have to check on it. Timing's important. Once it's leather hard, We'll go ahead and we'll take it off the bat. We'll flip it over so the bottom can dry evenly. And then we have to do the trimming process. And that will be another video all in itself. Okay, so that is our completed cylinder. So practice, practice, practice. Um, I'll do one other quick thing here. Since we are here, just to hopefully give you an idea of what your project should look like. See if we can do this. We're going to... Slide this under halfway. Go ahead and pull the wire tool up. Ah, it's not cooperating. 
clay is probably too wet at this point. We'll see what we can do here. So we'll peel this away. So I want to show you the inside here, and hopefully you can see that in the video. I kind of messed it up, but you can see the thickness goes from thick at the bottom to slightly tapered and thinner at the top. That's normal. When we trim the um, project, when it's leather hard, we'll take away a little of this extra clay. We need it there now for support, but when we trim it, we'll trim that away later. Now the very bottom is a little thicker yet. That's okay as well because that's where we're going to trim out a foot, okay? So that would be what we would be shooting for. Maybe could have pulled a hair more clay right out of the bottom, but I know I can trim that away, okay? All right, so have fun getting on the wheel. Have fun practicing. The more you do it, the better you get, and the quicker you'll get at it. All right, see you in the next one.